Okay, today we're onboarding clients. I'll show you how easy it is to get your clients set up with their AI, get rebilling set up, and get their first assistant created and talking, hopefully in less than five minutes. So let's go ahead and go over to the screen right here. All right, so I have two tabs open. I have my workspace. This is your slash dashboard. And I have high level open and another tab in this new sub account I created here. All right, so what we're gonna do, if, if, if you're using the custom menu link, we're going to that sub account, we're clicking on the custom menu link to create that sub account, right? If you are using the import option, which you can do here, import installed, go from there, you can do that. I'm gonna use the custom menu link on this one. So let's go ahead and go into this new client sub account. We should see our custom menu link right here. We're gonna go ahead and click that. Where you see it's creating the account. If we go back, we can start to see this sub account populate now. So now our sub account here is created, it's branded, and we already have some things installed as far as a snapshot. So we have a couple of these assistants already installed. I'll show you how all this works here. And then we already have the ability to set up rebilling on here as well. All right, so let's go back to our workspace. I'll show you what to kind of set up as far as a snapshot so that the next time you onboard a client, it's automatically connected. They automatically have assistance and all that stuff is already done. And then we'll get into setting up the rebilling. Okay, so that was super easy, right? So if we go to our agency tab here, this first tab default has a new account snapshot where we can set parameters for new accounts that are created ahead of time, right? We can even put some assistant snapshots in there so that every time we create an account, our permissions are enabled for that account so that the client can't see call center, they can't see inbox, they can't see assistance. We're setting the limits for this account. We're going ahead and we're turning on rebilling and we're setting our price per minute. And then we're putting some snapshot assistance in there. So this is if you have a niche or you just have some to get them started. You can set all of this here and it's as easy as clicking what you want them to see, clicking whether you want unlimited or some sort of limit, turning on rebilling with the price per minute. And then if you have an assistant ID that you love, so I'll take this one for example, and you throw it in here and we add this to our stack. There we go, right? Super, super easy. Uh, and then we'll save our changes here. Now every new account that is created with the custom menu link, anything that creates the account, the import installed, will get these settings here, okay? So really the only thing left we have to do is set up rebilling um, and just putting in the card info. So what we can do is if I'm not doing this on behalf of the client, I want the client to do it. I just go here to members where we add verified users. These verified users will be able to manage payments, things like that. Um, as you can see here, if I go to settings, I can't really click on anything other than my account stuff, right? But by adding myself here, Let's go ahead and add my account. And I add myself as a verified member of this sub account. We can see now I can edit the account, I can edit the integration, I can edit the members, and then I can mess with billing, right? So if you're not seeing this stuff here, it's because you or your client is not a verified member, which you can click here to open this menu or in this dots or more and then invite member or manage access. Okay, now to get this person rebilling, I'll show you what it looks like on the client side to receive the email, to log in, to onboard, everything like that. Uh, but I will tell you from the agency perspective, even though we have this stuff turned on, you may wanna go to manage rebilling here and then turn on charge for voice minutes and then save those changes. And if you wanna give them some sort of allowance to get started with, you can do that there, but we want this client to pay for all of their usage, so we'll let them do that. So now I'm gonna send an invite to an email that I have where you can see what it looks like from the client perspective to get the onboarding link and what they go through. Okay, so let's invite this client here. I have this email that's never accessed this, so what I'll do is, again, I can either click here or I can click Manage Access or Invite Member. All of these kind of give you a similar menu here. Let's invite a member, and I'm gonna invite my client here builderai at gmail.com. So let's go ahead and send that invite. And now this is a new user. So you'll see this dash, right? This user did not exist. We went ahead and created an account on behalf of them and we're sending them a link to reset the password. 
and everything there, right? So they have a dash there because they haven't put in their name. All they have is an email. Once you onboard, put in your name, you'll start to notice this stuff here. But if you ever see a dash, that's why. So let's go here to client email. And we see this email here, create assistance, invite to your account. Hey, you've been invited to a new AI account. Follow the link to reset your password because we created an account on behalf of them. They don't have a password. So we'll follow this link here and let's reset our password. Okay. And we will click continue where we're taking to this menu here. So I get a lot of people who come in here and they say, well, how do I know that they won't get access to my workspace or get access to a workspace or whatever? As if you're inviting clients, you invite them. If they sign up, it'll be native to workspaces, right? Where in this example, we had the client sign up, we put their email in on behalf of them. Everything's already configured so that when they come here, the only thing that they can click on is the sub account that we've allowed them access to, right? So in the same thing from the agency owner perspective, if I log in, I get the selection of all the workspaces I'm a part of, as well as all the sub accounts I'm a part of to be able to select from. But from a client view, this white labeled perspective here, right? I'd be able to come in here and see the sub account that I'm onboarding to. So let's go ahead and click continue. All right, and me is the client here. You can see down here, Flow Builder AI, I'm logged in as Flow Builder AI. And you can see from our original, it won't let me in the workspace now because I'm logged in under a different account, but you remember that we only had certain things selected here that the user could actually you know, use or select, right? So they can only see context knowledge base. This is kind of that uh, permissions or viewing um, example here because as an admin, you'd be able to see everything. So as a client here, I'm gonna to go to my settings. I'm gonna to go to billing. And you can ask the client here to put in their info if they want, they really don't have to. And we're gonna add a balance. So when we add this balance, a customer ID is gonna automatically be assigned to this account on your Stripe, the Stripe that you integrated at the workspace, right? So we're gonna create a customer inside of your Stripe for you for this sub account, for the client account here, setting up the wallet. So now that we have a customer ID, that means we can set up wallet balance. And so we can add wallet balance here, and then you can see we can add enable automatic payment. So um, I'll do it both ways. So let's do, let's add $10 in here. All right, so what this is gonna do is give me a QR code. That means the client, I just scan the QR code and a checkout link is processed. You can see it here in the dashboard, it's unpaid. Now, um, if you look, I have a Stripe for a different company account. Right there, you can see all the logos, all of your stuff is branded. This is your Stripe account. So as a customer, I'm gonna go in here and pay. Let's pay one second. Okay, let's pay that. And once we're paid, you'll see all of this update inside the portal. You see it's paid, it turns green, and our wallet balance is now $10. Easy enough, right? Now we can come here and we can enable automatic payment. So now that they have $10 in wallet balance, they can go make calls they can do what they need to. This will pay down and then once their wallet hits zero or starts to run into the negative, we'll cut them off from making more calls, whatever it may be, right? And so having them enable automatic payment here will refill this wallet balance um, when it gets to a certain threshold with a certain amount. So again, it's gonna ask us for another QR code. If they ask, this is just a blank checkout page. So there's no like money involved here, right? So if you look, Again, branded, everything looks good. My email's already in there. All I need to do is put in the card that I want on file for this automatic payment to happen. I put that in here.
And once that's processed, you'll see my card info is in there. I can now click to activate and I can refill my wallet with some odd amount of money when it gets below some odd amount of money, right? Now, let's take the example of when our wallet balance draws down. I would go in here and make a call, get a phone number and everything like that, but that just may take too much time. So I'm gonna bring my wallet balance down to $9 and show you what happens. Okay, and just to kind of show you this stuff happening live, so here is the Stripe account. This is obviously not my main Stripe account. This is just the one I'm using, the one I integrated. You see the $10 is paid to me as drop build here, right? from the wallet balance that was created here. So this is all your Stripe, this is all your money. Um, now what we're gonna do, and you can even see when it comes to, I guess you can't really see that, but all the receipts and everything are branded to you. It's your Stripe. So now what we're gonna do is we have it where the wallet will refill with $10 when the balance gets below $10. And so I'm going to, here on the back end, I'm just gonna take our wallet balance here and I am going to drop it below $10. So let's go to nine. I'm gonna save that. And you'll see once this hits nine, an automatic charge is brought in. So it was below 10, it refilled with 10. We're back up to 19. And we can see in the Stripe, if I refresh the page here, you'll be able to see that refill amount inside of my stripe here so twenty dollars one for that initial ad balance the second one for the automatic refill and now as the client makes calls their wallet essentially will pay down faster because they're paying 21 cents a minute you're paying seven right so triple the cost so in theory their wallet will have to replenish three times as much as yours and that's how you're able to make a ton of margin on usage-based billing so that is getting your client set up from a to Z from the account creation all the way to setting up rebilling and having it automatically paying everything and they are ready to go. This is ready to deploy. They can go ahead and grab their assistance that were automatically added from the agency snapshot. Go ahead and start making calls, add active tags, get chat working. They can be booking in five to 10 minutes. So that is how you get a client set up A to Z.